Hey, what's going on everyone? Alex here. I just wanted to thank you and welcome you back to part two. In the last episode, we covered configuration, and if you haven't seen that one, you probably should take a look. Okay, so the very next step, now that we've done the base rudimentary stuff, we get to get into the fun stuff before any coding is done. I want to I want to add a couple of textures to our game, just so we can see what's happening right away. We're going to go into our scene objects, go to add a new object, and I want to start with a 3D box. This is going to be our dungeon floor, so name it dungeon underscore floor, or ground. We'll do ground for now, and we'll call this stone. Dungeon, ground, stone, underscore and it'll be the first one, actually. So dungeon ground stone. Now, the texture that I drew is on a 16 by 16 plane. So we're going to do 16 by 16 by 16. Width is basically length, height. So length by width is height. And then depth is, well, uh, depth is the true height in a 3D model. I'm going to explain this using my art program really fast, just so those who may need the visual example. So let me boot up my art, go into, I use pixel edit, but you can use whatever you'd like. Uh, this is just what I, I've trained on. So, so we're going to use a width and height of 16 by 16. Um, that would be for our tile sets, but I'm going to do like 320 by one, uh, 180, just, or two, 240 rather, just so that way uh, you can see uh, what I, like I can draw and stuff. So anyways, create, this is what we're going to do. So basically with the way that the system works is we have you know we have this structure which is our 3d object right and so here's here's this depth is the depth of the object in the 3d plane we have width we have width and height which is this direction okay so think about height is the y axis on the 2d plane width is the x axis and z axis is the depth essentially. Now, this isn't Z order. This is like Z elevate, uh, not even Z elevation. This is just Z depth, 3D depth. Okay. So with that out of the way, that should make this next concept pretty, pretty straightforward. Getting back into our, in our situation, we're going to orientate our face. We can change this to Z, but we're going to leave it on Y. The back is the X axis. We want to keep that logic true. If you change this, it kind of messes the, uh, how the, 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 texture is laid out and what you're doing. So we're going to enable transparency textures. That just means if, if the texture has a transparent piece, it will show through rather than being blocked in with like a black or a background pink or something like that. So we're going to set it to enable the textures transparency. We want to show the front face and we want to let it react to lights. This is really important. Every game scene that you add and layer in GDevelop has its own uh, lighting layer. We're going to be using external lights, but they do need to react to lights. If we, if you remove the lighting, you're going to see an error here. And that error is letting you know that if without the lighting element, uh, it won't work. But because we're using third party, it doesn't recognize it as a light source until we're running the scene. So even if you have an error here, you can completely ignore it. So now we're going to go to the tiled front face. We want to enable that and we're going to choose a file. And now that we've we chose a file, we're gonna choose the choose it from the device. We're gonna go to our the tile set that we have that I gave you guys. Let's go to tile set. And the first one we want to do is the dungeon floor tile. The dungeon floor tile is actually dungeon 04. We have, as you can see here, we have the dungeon corner piece. The these are for transitioning. So these ones are all free for you guys. Check them out. We added some extra grass. I got pillars with pillar tops, some extra decals, and some. Uh, there's a brazier in here, so you can add fire to that if you wanted to. Uh, the dungeon wall and some wall decor. So, but but dungeon zero four is what we're using. So here we go. We loaded this up, and remember, tiled front face. That's all you got to do. You can go down here and you can disable these faces if you want, or leave them because we have the uh, the transparency enabled. Now that we have the stone added. What we're going to do is we're going to add it to our game scene. And of course, it's super tiny, and that's okay. We're going to go into our grid setup, and we're going to set it to 16 by 16, because that's the 
pixels that we're using. We're going to hit apply. And then we're going to show our grid. Now that I have our grid, you can kind of see that there's this weird shadow underneath your box if you zoom in. And that's because we are at a depth of 16, which means our, our box is standing 16 pixels off of the zero axis. If we wanted this to be on the floor, we have to minus its depth, and that'll put it at the floor. Okay, well, if that is, if the zero is where our player is gonna be standing, this is why we're moving it downwards. So if zero is a, a layer, then negative 16 down means that this will be exactly its height below the zero axis. We could even change this to one, but then you can see how much further back it is. If it was at one, we would want to do negative one. And so for the floor, that's what we're going to do. Even You can even set this actually to zero if you want it to be a true flat plane with no sides or edges. And if you say zero, we still want to do negative one, not zero, because we want it below, one, one pixel below to make sure that our player doesn't fall into it or, you know, or through it. And we're going to see a, a couple of other errors that are going to happen because of this system. And we're going to address the Z order later because of the way the camera works. But that's okay. I have to show you each of these pieces. I want you to, I want you to know why it works and how it works before, uh, you know, anything else happens. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this tiled sprite to the entire size of our canvas. This is pretty big in 3D. And you'll, you'll see why, because of the scale of our stuff. If you have models and 3D models and everything like that, it, you'll be able to see their size. But because there's no 3D viewport, we have to do some, some extra bits here. So now that we have the ground stone, I'm going to make a folder and call this tile set. And we're just going to add that into the tile set. We're going to add a new one uh, outside. Oops, I made it inside. Drag it out if you need to. Okay, come on. Inside of this one, we're going to rename it as uh, objects or, um, yeah, objects. We may want one for UI. I always like to just pre-organize. We're going to call this one UI, which is actually where our sword is going to go. So that's important for this video. And then we're going to create another one, particles. There we go. So we have UI, objects, tile sets, and particles. To make the object tiled, you need to make sure that you click the tile front face image. So now that we have our grid, um, it looks a little, it's a little messy for those that maybe visually struggle with looking at the grid. We don't really need it until we start placing more things. So if you need to see it while you're moving around or, or anything like that, you can go to just enable or disable it very quickly. Okay, so now I want to go to objects and we're going to add a new object. We're gonna call the 3D box, we're, or we're gonna add a 3D box, and we're gonna call it first person camera. Uh, this You could make it your player and assign everything. You may want to, if you're using a 3D object, or maybe there's a, another object you want to use to represent the player's body, and then you could put the camera inside of it, like how more how, how games today work. You could do it that way. You could create a 3D object and then position the camera at a, at a particular height inside of that object, bind them together so it feels like you're in the character's eyes. Um, but effectively, this is all you need to do. So we're going to just name first person camera. We're going to go and make this, uh, because our game is 16 by 16, we're going to make our player sprite uh, 16 as well for this example, actually, at a full 16 by 16 by 16. We're going to enable uh, texture transparency, and we're going to leave the React to Lights off for this one. Go ahead and leave it. We don't need to add any textures or any sprites. We're going to hide this object anyways. Let me know what you thought about this video. Please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. Remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.